So for lab four, I wanted to show you um, how to get an improved benchmark. So here I've got my forest data loaded into ArcGIS Pro on the virtual machine. And if you zoom in, it's pretty hard to see where the bench was that we took our coordinates near. Um, so just hard to see. Now out on uh, one of the drives at HSU, and this is only available at HSU, there's a, a drive called Academic Storage that you see, should see on the virtual lab. In there, you should see GIS data, and then areas of interest, and then City of Arcata, and then the City of Arcata Aerial Photo 3 inch. This is a data set that we obtained from um, the City of Arcata, and it's pretty cool. It's three inch aerial data, so it's very high resolution. Now, one problem with this data is it's very large. Um, it includes a number of different tiles. Sorry, I'm bouncing around. But it also is in a geodatabase. And a geodatabase is something we don't use very often, but that is one that we use uh, once in a while, especially with large data sets. Now, the problem is I can't just drag and drop um, stuff over. I could do add data. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to go to the catalog, which is going to be under view, and then catalog pane. And there's my catalog. Now this catalog can have a whole bunch of things in it, but the one we're going to use here is folders. And what we want to do is we want to add a folder connection so that we can get to that data. Now different folks will add different levels uh, to their folders. Um, here's that drive, the L drive. Okay. And here's the GIS data. Now I could keep going down, but I don't want to go too far because I don't want to have to map a bunch of drives. So I'm just going to map GIS data. I mean, that's something you'll do at uh, different levels, but don't add every single folder uh, in. It'll actually slow things down. Here we have City of Arcata, and here we have City of Arcata Aerial Photo. Now, when I open up the TIFF, notice there's our geodatabase. And over here, the geodatabase is a folder where if you go inside, it's like, what is that? Well, it's all kinds of strange and interesting files that you can't really do anything with. You can't drag and drop them, and you don't want to modify anything inside this folder because it's a special format from Esri. What we can do is inside of our catalog, we can click that little arrow, and it's going to show us what's inside of there. And here is the extent, which we don't care about, but then here's this TIFF, which is really a whole bunch of TIFF files. Um, and multiple gigs of data. Uh, so I went ahead and dragged and dropped that in. I think I did. You can also right click um, and it should say add to current. And so that should add it as well. May take a minute both because it's a large data set and because uh, we're running over a couple different network things. I actually paused the video because it took a couple minutes for that to load in that data set. Um, be prepared for that. Again, it's a big data set. And if you take a look at the resolution, uh, there's what a few years ago was a high resolution image that's below a meter. And now we have this kind of data, uh, which is not uncommon nowadays because of not only aerial photography, which is what this is, but also UAVs can go even higher resolution. So this is three inch data. And look at how accurate that is. Now, we also aren't completely sure how accurate that aerial photography is, so there's always additional uncertainty. Um, but we can certainly see where our bench is more accurately than we can off of that other image. So this will allow us to establish our benchmark like we did in the past. Um, and I recommend using this for a number of things around Arcata. Always try to use the highest resolution, highest quality aerial photography you can um, when you're digitizing. I shouldn't say always when it's needed based on your project. Now, you can tell that the reason we established this benchmark was because we could see this, where we can't see these trees, so we can't digitize here. We need to use a GPS or a compass and a rangefinder.